scrapbookers, this is Katie Scott and I'm going to be working on a, an assignment for um, Get It Scrapped, um, their blog. And the assignment is to use a bracket composition and you can find that in, at Masterful Scrapbook Design in a class called Building Pages, I believe I'm getting that right. And so I am going to be um, taking inspiration from Debbie Hodge's um, layout called Downtown. Um, and she's got a picture of Eureka. So I've kind of pulled some things together. I don't normally do that, <clears throat> but I did that in this case um, just to to get things hopefully a little bit faster. So in her layout, she used um, a portrait, um, a portrait, not a landscape, um, photo. So I'm going to be using two photos, and these are the two photos, and. I was I, I have three, but I think I'm gonna use these two. And let me just put that one to the side. So the story of this page is my daughter just makes cakes like all the time. Um I'm going to trim up let's see. I sort of want to trim this one just a little, but I just I might not. I might just leave it as is. So let's choose some background paper. Um this is so one of the things in Debbie Hodge's, um, the, I think it's called Building Pages, is to figure out where your photo wants to be. So in this one, my daughter's looking straight at the camera. She's proud of her cake. Um, so I could put it over here, but I don't think that makes sense at all because um, it kind of feels like it's opening this way, so I'm the, the pictures kind of naturally want to be on this side of the page. So that's where they're going to go. Let's look at the background papers that I've, um, I've pulled a bunch of background papers. I've pulled a bunch of things, so hopefully I won't have too much to um, go through and take up too much time. So I'm sorting into... These are background papers, and then I put the stickers over here. I've got some paper strips, and then I've got some cut apart things that I'm gonna put in with the stickers because those kind of go into the embellishment category for me. So right now, I'm just looking at what are the background papers going to be. So let's figure that out first. So I picked five or six, and um, one is this blue paper that I really, I think I might use this one. I'm going to turn off the light directly above me because I think it's creating some glare. And I don't think it's creating very much light. Hold on. <laughs> I don't think you'll notice a difference in the amount of light. Hold on. Let me just check that out. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. So I, when I make these videos, I just press record and then <laughs> start talking. They're not rehearsed like Debbie Hodges are rehearsed and concise, and I think you'll really enjoy them. There's um, the same on red. It kind of makes the green in the in the um, pictures pop. I really gotta say, I think I really like this blue because it's got the, like, it's, it's inked on the edge. <laughs> it's a really old paper though. I don't even know, I wanna say like Daisy D's or maybe Elsie. Love Elsie or Sassafras from like 10 years ago. But I, I really kind of like this for this page. Um, I'm not sure, so let's try some others. This is a little chevron on red. It's okay. Um, it's got some glitter to it, which is lovely, except that I think that glitter makes it harder to adhere. Um, here's another one. Uh, that has some embellishments kind of already on it. I don't think this works at all. <laughs> I'm going to put that to the side. Here's another one that's got the little, um, like the gingerbread people, which is kind of cute. Um, I'm not sure it's going to go with the, um, the bracket design. So the bracket design is basically like, you, like an L shape. So say we've got that, or... Let's just go with a bigger, like say this was our bracket. That's a big fat bracket. <laughs> then um, the pictures might go somewhere like there. Um, 
Huh. It's okay. I I I guess I'll keep this as a maybe. But I kind of think it detracts a little bit from the design. I've got like a sunburst. And I'm gonna say no to that. <clears throat> Let's see what we got on the back of that. Just like a red, another red design. Um, I kind of like that. But I think I'm really committed to that blue. And, and the same thing with these two is I like them, but I'm probably not going to use them because of the embellishment that's already on the paper. Although I do like it against the cream, I must say. Let me just see. I really kind of like this one, especially because of this. Let's, so these, I'm down to these two for my final choices. And I don't know why, but I just keep going back to that blue. I think it's because um, there's we get those LED lights and they just kind of on the Christmas tree this year and the pictures are kind of dark so I kind of feel like the black around the edges um, work with that a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> Let's try a black. So he, the next step is to set up that that um, bracket. So we're going to be doing a bracket. That's gonna go like shaped like an L. So let me take out the embellishments and just get the things that could be used as strips. Okay. So put those things to the side. So these could be used as strips. I mean, those are the photos. <laughs> now we need to set up some strips. So in the example in the class, Debbie's got um one line that goes this way and then she's got one two three four things along the bottom and then she's got a title down along the bottom as well so let's start with that kind of an idea these are on trend border stickers from crepe paper and the one that's kind of grabbing my eye is this, this one with the stripes, just because it's black and white. And remember, we've got that black and white thing. So I am a scrapbooker who really likes the theory of pick it and stick it. So I, <laughs> I think um, not everybody does, but I think once you take you know, once you put commit to something on your layout, then it gets it sets a limitation and it makes it easier for you to. Um, so I'm gonna pull that up just a little bit because I just want it a little bit over to this side. And I haven't. I'm not gonna stick that down. I'm not gonna like mush, mush, mush it down too hard. Now I want um, three other papers and in the in the class Debbie pays a lot of attention to the colors in the photos um, I guess I'm not paying as much attention to that um, I kind of like this <clears throat> excuse me I also really like the idea of using um, this line of cameras as my vertical strip. So let me just cut that and see how it looks. This is also crepe paper. I think this is from the Close Knit collection, but I could be wrong on that. So let's, let's see if I did like, seeing where to cut this. <laughs> And what I did with that little camera is I just keep a little box of my cutoffs and then I'll, at some point I go through these and use them or if I don't go through them and use them, I'll just put them in a little bag, <laughs> set them aside to theoretically get a, get rid of someday. <laughs> but if, you know, I think a lot of scrapbookers have uh, borderline hoarding issues. Um, probably, maybe that's an overstatement. We just collect a lot of stuff. So this paper here is 
um, I think it's a My Mind's Eye paper from Christmas a couple years ago, but I like the darkness of this um, red, and that might be too thick of, that might be too thick, but let's go with it anyways, just for now. And so I'm not adhering this yet, I'm just kind of playing with it. And let's see. It's just a plain old gray. So it's kind of going to go like this. And so let's try to get two more. Two more designs. So I've got red, I've got black and white, I've got the blue. Um, I was going to use this, but I don't think I'm going to. I think that's a no. Let me. I kind of want to use something that's going to show through. So maybe something with a pattern that will um, have some holes in it. Let me see what could work. Okay, I have this. I thought there was holes in it, but there's not. It's also a border sticker um, sheet. I kind of like that right over this, but the photos are actually going to go over it. And then it's going to go under this one. So that was from Glitz Design. So there we are so far. Um, I'm wondering if I like it. I kind of don't. <laughs> I do, but I don't. Do you ever do that? And then you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. Let me just cut one more little strip. You know what? I almost think washi would be good, but I think I'm just going to use this little green strip here. Let me just see how that's going to look. The green on the back. So that just brings in one more color and it's a much different green like my daughter's got like a very fluorescent looking green on the back of her uh, or, or as the frosting on her cake. Um, I actually think I do like this because it to me like these colors kind of all of these colors are a little bit muted, and then those colors are kind of garish on her cake. Um, don't tell her that. <laughs> no, she... But, um... Okay, so here we go with this. The thing that's bothering me a little bit is over here, just got a little issue. So I'm a scrapbooker who really fills up the page. Um, in the example that Debbie did, there's a much better, um, <laughs> there's more white space. I really have a problem with white space, so <laughs> that's my issue. So I am recording this on January 7th, and it's almost time for CHA. And by the time you see this, like this will be, CHA will already be out. Um, CHA is the Craft and Hobby Association trade show. And so it's fun to just kind of be, kind of watch that from the comfort of my own home. <laughs> and I really feel like it's almost gotten to be like the Super Bowl. Like I think you can see, so because I've been to one CHA and I'll tell you, you really, you can't see everything in the show. There's just so much there. So you might wonder, like, if all of these things were inked edged, maybe I should have inked all those edges, and maybe I should have, except I'm too lazy to. <laughs> um, yep, that's it. Um, <clears throat> but I feel like we've been seeing a lot. Um, we get to see a lot online 
from the Craft and Hobby Association trade show, and it's really cool. I, I like to, I, I pin stuff that I see, and I look on Instagram. There's, there's like a lot of show samples coming out today for that. So here's my, okay, and I, yes, I'm just looking at Debbie's example, and um, the example I'm looking at of hers, again, is called Downtown Eureka, and um, hers is much, it's got like, <laughs> it's it there's just better white space but that is <laughs> that's my issue let's see if I can cut this photo down just a little bit let's see just so I'm taking up a little bit less space with it okay I kind of like that so when I kind of like something in my scrapbooking I stick it down <laughs> so I don't keep thinking about it and if you have, if your goal is to kind of speed up your process, just try this, you know, pick it and stick it and just keep going. And you'll find that your scrapbooking process goes a little bit faster. Or it can. It doesn't have to like every time, but sometimes it's good to just kind of play with the speed in which you create. Just try it. Trust me. So if you always create a layout at a certain time, you know, in a certain amount of time, try a different time. Either slow it down or speed it up. But probably speed it up. <laughs> okay, so then, uh, let's see. Debbie's done her um, journaling right onto the photo, which is very cool. And I wish you could magically do that in paper, but you can't. Um, she's put her title here. And... I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put my journaling up here because this just seems like a good little space for that. My title's gonna go here, and then I'm gonna follow De Debbie's example of one, two, three on the embellishments. So an embellishment triangle, if you will. So let's do the, let's do the journaling first. I'm gonna do that just directly onto the page with a Sharpie, and that I've seen some scrapbookers do is they'll um, they'll just write out the lines for their journaling beforehand and I kind of like the way that looks. So I don't know what I'm going to say yet but I'm just making my journaling lines just so that they're going to fit in that space. And I'm just so I did a black sharpie for the journaling lines and I'm using, well, kind of a dark blue for the journaling. So Allison has become quite the cake maker. She independently independently buys <laughs> makes has a bit of help with the oven and then decorates and serves she's in charge of that um, her cakes. Um, practice until perfect girl. Perfect girl. And I say that practice until perfect girl because um, she does that with a lot of things. Um, like when she learned to hula hoop or when she learned to jump rope, she'll just get it in her head that she's going to get this thing down. And you can't make her do it. It's got to be something that she wants to do. <coughs> and so she just, um, so she's like a self-directed little practice expert. And so that's kind of where I want the title to go. Um, so sometimes when I, 
I don't really want to do the practice makes perfect even though I wrote that in the journaling. I'm going to just right off camera here look at Pinterest and see if I can find um, a good, what I'll do is I go to Pinterest and then I'm going to type in practice quotes and I will find different quotes. It's, I don't know why it's taking so long. Usually it's much faster. <laughs> Come on internet. Got people waiting. Okay, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Understand your worth, appreciate your life, appreciate your blessings. Um, practice makes progress, not perfect. That's cool. Um, patience is not the ability to keep a good attitude while... Patience is not the ability to wait, but the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting. Um, anybody can be cool, but awesome takes practice. Never give up on anybody. Miracles happen every day. Practice like you're in last. Perform like you've already won. Um, surround yourself with positive people. You practice and you get better. It's very simple. Um, practice self-love. It is not your practice life. This is the, all there is. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, do well by doing good. Be so good they can't ignore you. Collect moments, not things. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I just think I'm just going to write cake practice. Because that's what she's up to. And it seems kind of obvious, but I don't care. These are um, Happy Plays by Sassafras. And I really just like the way these letters kind of coordinate with the the um the title or the outline of the page and i'm gonna go over these little scallops and it's gonna create some trapped white space but guess what i don't care i think it's gonna be fine so i'm gonna just do oh i have a little dog hair underneath there just a tiny little one my, my new dog is a flat coat retriever, so she's like um, a black golden retriever. And we used to have labs, and they shed like crazy. And our new dog, um, Jessie, the flat coat retriever, does not really shed. She sheds like I, the vet said, it's more like a human hair kind of a shed. So she's got fur, and it's very soft and beautiful. She doesn't need to be groomed in any way. But it's really awesome because she just doesn't, um, I don't think I got that very straight. Let me just pull these up and get that a little bit straighter. Anyways, there was a little dog hair though, just there, um, but it was just tiny. So it's not a big problem in my house. But you know what she did this morning? She, she, um, she took her collar off and chewed it up. Oh my gosh, so she's a rescue dog, so I'm thinking like, well, maybe that's how she got on the loose. <laughs> okay, so I want to do cake practice, and I think I want to use either a white, like a cream color, or a yellow, or something lighter, or perhaps a red for my letters. So I have, haha, -ha, I have the red right here. This is Studio Calico Wonderland, and let's just see if we can write practice. So a lot of scrapbookers will um, kind of lay out their their letters before adhering them. <laughs> I really like to just adhere them. So it doesn't always come out perfectly and hopefully, and it doesn't have to come out perfect, just like we just want to make progress, right? Practice makes progress, not perfect. Um, but, cake practice, huh, I'm not sure I love this. So, part of my little pick it and stick it philosophy is, I don't, I, you know, sometimes I, I still will pull up what I've done, and I just might do that right now, um, but it, it makes it harder so it's, it's therefore easier to 
commit to your choices. So committing to your choices is a concept from improvisational comedy. And it's really like one of the rules in improv is to always agree with your scene partner. And so if you just kind of get a little schizophrenic and think of yourself <laughs> and your gut as your scene partner, because, you know, you're usually not having more than one person work on a scrapbook page. So if you just listen to your gut and, um, and trust it and think of it as your scene partner, um, <laughs> then just, you know, keep agreeing with everything you do so that you can keep moving forward. So that, as long as I, I think I spelled that right. Crack, no, I left out a C. Ugh. <laughs> so I am going to correct that. Let me just, let me just type this into Google to make sure I have the, this is how I spell check myself now. I just Google prac. -tis. Yes, there's a C that I missed. So I like where this ended. So rather than um, taking up these letters, I'm actually going to take up the first couple letters because I don't think they went down very well anyways. Okay, so that's where the C needs to go. And then these are the other letters. <clears throat> so we'll get that C down here. And then with letters like this A, you see this A? There's like a big tail on that. I can kind of like, I'm just gonna cut that tail so I can mush this title together a little bit better. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I hope it looks good. So when I'm doing layouts for um, Get It Scrapped posts, I always feel like I, I need to like up my game a little, you know, from my regular scrapbooking where I, I'm really not as concerned with the end result, um, which sounds a little nuts, but that's another... Um, concept from improvisational comedy is like you just you know you can't be worried about whether it's funny um you know because improv is usually about being funny but if you're trying to be funny then you probably won't be um so if you're trying to make an awesome layout you probably won't because <laughs> you'll worry too much and so i'm going to use a different p Cake practice. Woohoo! Okay, that looks good. Um, and instead of a dot, I'm just going to use a little asterisk because she makes little asterisks with her frosting. Okay, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I think just about not keeping it too precious. It's just, you know, to keep moving forward. Whoops. And to keep, um, to just not worry about what you're doing in scrapbooking too much. So then, then you'll be able to go faster, have more fun, and usually it'll turn out pretty good. And it just be okay with, sometimes it won't. Like it, it doesn't have to be awesome every single time. Um, <clears throat> but using, oh, I lost my, I lost my little link to Debbie's uh, page. But um, anyways, I know that she had embellishments here here and here. So let's get that done now. So when, let's just see, what do we want to do for embellishments? Um, I don't know yet. <laughs> this is the, everybody nowadays does the layered embellishments. So let's see if we can do something kind of layered. I'm not sure. So I don't really like anything that I've pulled over here. I don't think I want to use a Project Life type card. So I'm just kind of getting these things out of my way. And those are, I don't think, going to work. Um, but this might, let's see. I've got Be Good. <laughs> Santa Claus is coming to town. Um, Christmas is here. 
Christmas. I could have used that Christmas down here, but um, I could do Christmas case practice, but I'm not going to mess with the title anymore. I kind of, I'm done worrying about the title. Um, I don't see anything that I could use from this sheet, so um, now I'm thinking like, oh, I don't know what to do. One great way to kind of place, to figure out where you're going to place embellishments is to use washi tape. So I've got these two different chevrons. I use them a lot. I really like them. Um, I'm going to use the black and I'm just going to kind of over the photo put sort of where and the nice thing about washi tape is you can you can move it around so easily which you care about if you're a paper scrapbooker. I guess if you're digital, you can move things around any old time. So there's, I'm just kind of marking off where my embellishments are going to go with this washi tape. So there's one, two, three. That's where they're gonna go. Um, I do wanna make it more fancier. <laughs> and so one way that I've been really able to um, make better, easier embellishment choices is I've done this little muffin tin and just stocked it up with all sorts of things. So an easy thing to do would to just be like button, button, button. I, I could do that. I don't like that. <laughs> I know, I think I have um, little brads that look like, I think I already used them though. They look like gingerbread men. I don't know where I got them, but I, oh, I, I really think I already, oh no, here's one. <clears throat> I just have one though. It's just a little girl gingerbread man. Um, so that's one possibility, but if I did that, um, and I, I really kind of like using the goofy looking. I like to have one little cutesy thing on a layout, like like something like this. I just think it's funny. Um, <laughs> so let's try that. And then I've got a camera embellishment that could maybe go here. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm a little bit at a loss here as to, oh, here's another little gingerbread man dude so we'll just put him there I'm not sticking anything down I actually have no way I have three ha. <laughs> oh I have more than three okay I have um, all sorts of <laughs> little gingerbread people so I'm gonna do yes I am <laughs> I'm gonna do gingerbread people because that's funny and also what else am I gonna use them for let me just see if I have any more. I think one of them is going to have to be lonely. Maybe she'll get a little heart instead of a instead of a partner. <laughs> um, and then I have the other thing I've been using a lot of lately are these little stars, and I did them on my silhouette cut file. And um, someone asked on my on my YouTube channel, and they are, in case you're wondering. They're, um, they look like Studio Calico, oh, but they're not. They're um, KI Memories, and they're called Rockstar, and it comes with this shape and this shape. Sorry, let me get that a little bit easier for you to see. So it comes with those two shapes, but I like, I've really been digging this shape. It's just, I love it. It's so easy to use, and... Um, that's what I'm going to do. And so I think that's going to be where the embellishments are. What I might do is just put one more line of washi over each one of those. And now I feel like I've added something metal. <laughs> I've added some different textures to the page. And I can feel like I've <laughs> put some effort into my layout. Um, I'm really a scrapbooker who could do without the embellishments, although I really like them. Um, sometimes I just feel like they're a little bit overkill, but they really do, um, I say that, but I don't really mean it because you, I think they really do add a lot to a page. And I think, um, 
especially if you're trying to get noticed, you know, in a scrapbooking gallery, um, they're what other scrapbookers are going to notice. But even for your family, like my family is really into just very basic, like let's not tchotchke it all up layouts. They really, like they even tell me like, oh, this one is so nice because all you've done is um, some computer journaling and photos. Like we like that. Um, but I think that um, if you just put a little bit of extra effort into the embellishment of a page, it really does make it a little bit more special. So it's in the details, isn't it? <laughs> so it just shows that you cared a little more, you know, that you just went to a little extra trouble. So let's get some holes poked so we can place those. And I'm just gonna use, I have some thumbtacks that I thought were scrapbook embellishments, but I thought they were brads, but they're, I think these are from Making Memories from a long time ago, but they're not, they're like, they're thumbtacks. So I'm putting my mouse pad down and then I'm just gonna make a little hole and I'm gonna place the brad so I know where, where it's going. These goofy little brads. They're really cute though. I mean, they're kind of goofy and cutesy, but okay, I was gonna put them on the same plane, but I think I'm gonna actually put him just a little bit higher. And I would guess I got these at a scrapbooking yard sale. So my local scrapbook store, Whimsa Doodle, does um, scrapbooking yard sales. And I think they do them like a little bit before CHA so they can kind of, because um, I think they also, like whenever I'm there for the yard sale, I also, you know, buy a little bit of stuff from the store. And um, I think they do it to kind of clear, you know, clear the decks before all the new CHA stuff comes out. So there's... Okay, I, you know, I, I'm going to get up for a second because I, um, I have these ThermoWeb sticky dots that I've misplaced and I'm going to find them, darn it, um, because they are so great for sticking down your die cuts. Oh, where are they? I just had them out. Like, I've been using them like crazy, especially in my scrapbook videos. And um, I don't know where to put them. And it's kind of the end of the world. Do you ever have like a scrapbook, a scrapbook supply or something like that? I think I found them. Woohoo! Okay, I had made a little kit of something for myself, and they got stuck in there by accident. Yay! <laughs> so these are. ThermoWeb sticky dots, and if you make silhouette cuts, <laughs> let me tell you, use these things because you can just stick them down, and then the, what's going to happen is only, only the dots underneath the space where you have, you know, something is going to come up, and it's just the coolest thing ever. So I'm going to put those down after I, oops. I'm gonna put the rest of my little gingerbread men down first. Okay. And so it's good to put embellishments in a visual triangle with three three spaces. It just kind of um, does good things for your eyes in, in terms of design. If you've been scrapbooking for any length of time, you've probably heard that. Um, but if you are just from, if you're just looking at the blog at Get It Scrapped, I would encourage you to also look at Masterful Scrapbook Design because this, this year, 2014, um, we are breaking rules, breaking scrapbooking rules, and that's the first class, and I'm one of the teachers, hallelujah, so fun, um, 
So we're breaking scrapbooking rules and um, throwing all those design rules kind of out the window just for the fun of it because we're rebels like that. Because <laughs> it's just fun, right? It's fun to... I think um, sometimes in scrapbooking it's really easy to start taking everything a little too seriously and like, oh, you know, there's trapped white space or there's, you've got to put things in a visual triangle or got to do it this way and the rules are there so that um, your page is going to look good and if you follow the rules your page is going to look good but if you break if you know what the rules are then after you know after you've learned what the rules are it might get a little boring if you just always followed the rules right so to just spice your life up in terms of scrapbooking why not like play with breaking the rules and just take some of those rules and say I'm not gonna make a visual triangle I'm gonna put embellishments in four because we know how wrong that is and you know it's um, it's just I think creatively a little bit fun to break the rules and go out of the bounds and just do something different because that's going to keep it fresh for you. So you hear scrapbookers, you know, a lot of times you hear scrapbookers saying like, oh, I've lost my mojo and I, I just don't have it. And I think that happens to all of us. That happens to me too. But if I can, um, it's usually when that's happening for me, it's usually when I'm placing too much importance on the product of what I'm doing and not enough um, playfulness into the process so really encourage you to play with your process if you're having any of those like oh I just just don't have it I just don't I'm not excited to do it but I want to and sometimes too you know you don't have to do scrapbooking all the time or anything for that matter but um I really do enjoy it when I'm scrapbooking um like kind of on a daily basis it's just so it's so different than the rest of my life that I get a lot of enjoyment from it and it's just fun it just makes me feel like a kid like this is what I when I was a kid and I I had kind of a uh, my parents were divorced so <laughs> there you go there were there was family drama not on my part um, but I was all around um, so it was just a nice, like art was always kind of a nice escape for me. And so it's just like, I don't have drama in my life now, but thank goodness, like, knock on wood, right? But it's still like just a peaceful, happy place for me to escape to in an otherwise like pretty busy, busy intentionally busy and good. Like, I'm glad my life is busy, but it's also... You know, when you're in the, and I'm, you know, my kids are 10 and 11, and life is busy, and I got a lot going on, and this is my time, and I take it every day, and I used to feel kind of guilty about it, but um, I don't. I don't feel guilty about it anymore, because I think it helps me to be a happier, better mom. Okay, the other thing that I have, the, the cool thing about these sticky dots thing is you can put if you've got embellishments, you can kind of like tuck some away, which I have done. <laughs> so they're already ready. Like this is confetti, or it's not confetti. It's glitter. It's not glitter. It's sequins. That's what it's called. Come on. I even used to do beauty pageants. I ought to know <laughs> what sequins are. I did beauty pageants, um, teen beauty pageants back in the 80s. Um, when I was a teenager, and they, it, the ones that I did were called scholarship pageants, so they were, um, you know, not just beauty pageants, they also, like, took into account your GPA and your, your, um, community service and stuff like that, but as a result, and I lived in Maine, so it wasn't exactly the most competitive state, <laughs> if you know what I mean, um, you know, we aren't Texas, we weren't Texas or South Carolina where they make them so pretty, but, um, 
I, I got my scholarship to college from being in a beauty pageant. So it's funny, I got, I got a little notice in the mail the other day for a teen pageant. And um, I, I don't think, it, we live in Florida now, but I don't think um, my daughter is ready. I did them when I was 16 and 17, and my daughter is just 10. So, and it was my choice to do them. Okay, that's way off topic, huh? <laughs> so my videos do tend to get a little bit off topic, um, but I kind of think of them as, like, just think of these videos as your virtual crop buddy. And a lot of times um, when I'm scrapbooking, I love to listen to scrapbooking podcasts, but honestly, there's not enough of them for my taste. Like, I've listened to every single paper clipping round table. I love them. Um, I love the Digi Show also, but they just don't put them out enough for my taste because <laughs> I just love to listen to them all the time. And I used to listen to them more than once. Um, I kind of don't do that as much as I used to. A few, you know, certain ones I'll listen to more than once, but not every one. Okay, so now I'm just kind of going embellishment happy with all of these different sequins and that got me on my beauty pageant tangent <laughs> sorry about that but really if it wasn't for the beauty pageants I wouldn't live in Florida probably I got a scholarship to Eckerd College because Eckerd gives um, scholarships based on all sorts of different things so they end up having a diverse student body so that's clever Eckerd is a great school, in case you wonder, ever wonder. Okay, so those, my page is done. Ta-da. Um, oh, the only thing I kind of didn't do was a date on that. And I'm just going to do one. I don't know where. I'm not going to do one. <laughs> Oh, every page should have a have a date there. I'll break a rule. I'll put it in the back. Look, I'll even actually do it. Um, Christmas 2013. Allison at 10 years old. There we go. So in case somebody wonders, <laughs> it's there. That's the finished page, and you will see this on the Get It Scrapped blog and thank you for watching. Um, I am Katie Scott. My blog is called Kiss and Tell Scrapbooking for Keep It Super Simple and Tell Your Story. And I have a YouTube channel um, where I put a lot of process videos and most of them are long like this because I scrap in real time. But if you have, I, I also do some shorter ones and I also do some two minute tips. So if you've stuck in here this long with me, thank you for watching. Okay, bye.